Well, Bloomberg's got a, a great scoop, uh, which uh, you know is good piece of journalism apparently, uh, you know if it's true, uh, but is a terrible, terrible news uh, for uh, just about every person on this planet. Apparently, David Wormser uh, is advising the President of the United States once again. That name might sound familiar to you, but it uh, might be way back in your uh, your brain because. His name hasn't come up too much in the last few years uh, because he was an advisor uh, in the Bush administration. That's where he really worked. That's where he uh, became uh, rose to prominence uh, and became a, a prominent uh, American foreign policy thinker. Now, before and and since the Bush administration, Wormser has always been floating around somewhere, uh, working at various you know neoconservative think tanks. I believe mostly at the American Enterprise Institute. And he's made a living as a professional warmonger. That's what he does. 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, uh, he writes a bunch of pro-war propaganda. That's what he does. He makes the case for why America should invade this country or that country. Uh, he uh, And on top of all that, if that wasn't bad enough, uh, those who have taken his advice, uh, namely the Bush administration, have faced terrible consequences as a result. Wormser was one of the leading proponents of the Iraq War. Uh, in fact, he was in favor of the Iraq War uh, long before 9-11 ever happened. And remember, you know, it's hard to remember now, but it, at the time, uh, the Iraq War was justified by 9-11. Uh, that's what, uh, you know, we were all told it was about. I mean, when I was a kid, certainly, that's a, I, I made that mental connection because that's how it was portrayed in the media. That's how the Bush administration portrayed it. It's how people like uh, Wormser uh, tried to... Uh, thinly veil uh, his motivation uh, for overthrowing uh, the regime of Saddam Hussein. He, uh, as working a, a dire the, uh, I believe he was the Middle East policy advisor to Dick Cheney, um, which no matter, even if you don't know uh, who David Wormser is, anyone with that title uh, is going to be a terrible, terrible person, I assure you. And so he, along with the other famous neocons, uh, Paul Wolfowitz and Richard Pearl and um, you know the, the other guys, uh, Elliot Abrams is in there. Of course, Elliot Abrams, I don't think, was as involved with the Middle East stuff. Elliot Abrams, uh, of course, right now, actually, is working in the Trump administration uh, on trying to overthrow uh, the government of Venezuela, uh, but that's, uh, that's another story. But you know, the neocons have a lot of irons in the fire. Um, and it really is remarkable, considering that Donald Trump was elected on uh, really as a rebuke to the to the neocons, uh, to everything that the Bush administration stood for, and yet he has brought in uh, the heart of the Bush administration. This is the heart and soul of these guys. These were the thinkers uh, behind uh, all of the wars in the Middle East, and here they are uh, once again. In the case of David Worms, are trying uh, to get them involved in new ones. And this time, it's not a war in Iraq that he's interested. It's a war in Iran. Uh, but really, uh, you know, we've seen this movie before. Uh, he's not really interested in, in a new wars. He's, he's interested in the same wars uh, that he has wanted to, uh, I guess, provoke uh, for a, a good 20 years now, uh, ever since he wrote a, a rather infamous paper known as uh, A Clean Break, uh, which uh, he wrote – on, with other people, I guess. It, it, it's not known exactly who the authors were, but he's considered to be one of the main authors of this paper. Uh, and it was prepared for uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who, yes, was actually in power in the Prime Minister of Israel back in 1999. Uh, he's been uh, the Prime Minister of Israel, I believe, two separate times. And that paper was written during uh, the first Netanyahu government. And the paper uh, encouraged uh, attacking, uh, you know, launching preemptive strikes against Syria, Iraq, and Iran, and uh, talked about, and you know, made the case that overthrowing uh, Assad, Saddam Hussein, and the uh, Iranian mullahs, uh, is, you know, would be the the best case scenario for Israel. And so, based on this, uh, David Wormser has been trying to implement. Uh, you know, the theory that he outlined in this paper uh, for the last 20 years by encouraging the overthrow of Saddam Hussein, uh, Bashar al-Assad, and uh, the Iranian government. Now, you might have noticed uh, that uh, this paper said that, you know, overthrowing these governments would be in the best interest of Israel. And yet here we are, I've been talking about David Wormser working in the White House uh, for American presidents. So how do those two things go together? Well, it's simple. Uh, David Wormser has been advising American presidents on, uh, you know, what to do uh, and how to act, essentially, in the interest of Israel. 
David Wormser, quite literally, and this is not a slur, this is not some anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, he puts Israel first. And he has been pushing Israel's interests as – and again, you can argue as an Israeli that what Wormser argues is not in Israel's interest, but this is what David Wormser thinks are in Israel's interests. And he just has tried to push that repeatedly uh, for decades now in the United States and has tried to uh, change U.S. government policy and has been quite successful at it um, and uh, to act uh, in Israel's interest. And of course, the way he does this is by making the argument to these presidents that essentially it's in America's best interest to serve Israel's interest, which is about the uh, most thinly veiled example of dual loyalty I think I've ever heard of. And considering that uh, you know President Donald Trump uh, ran on a platform of putting America first, uh, specifically in reference to all these wars in the Middle East, I really have to you know put it to him straight that uh, you know you're either going to put America first or Israel first. You got to pick one. You can't do both, Mr. President. You know, there's not much you can do that is less America first than even taking a call from David Wormser, than even speaking to him. I mean, anyone uh, who is all, at all um, upset about the way things uh, happened in the early 2000s after 9/11, and uh, who is upset, uh, you know, about the Iraq War, who thinks that that was a bad idea, even in some way, uh, given the given the chance, probably would spit in David Wormser's face before they would take a call from him and, you know, consider any advice that he has to say. I mean, at the very least, if we're not going to throw people like him in prison uh, for uh, lying and manipulating uh, the government of the United States into committing mass murder uh, and starting a war that killed about a million people. Well, then I think at the very least we get to say, no, you don't. Get, you know, you don't get to have people listen to your opinion anymore. We're gonna, at the very least, we're gonna say we're not going to take your advice on anything you have to say about the Middle East ever again. I mean, as one of the architects of the, one of the greatest foreign policy disasters in American history, I mean, isn't that the minimum punishment? But no, this guy is still a distinguished scholar uh, who gets paid, you know, whatever his salary is from the American Enterprise Institute. Uh, people still, you know, donate, write, the donors write their checks uh, to pay this guy's salary, and he's taken seriously uh, by the president of the United States. I mean, this is a guy who you know, pretty, oh, it's out in the open now, uh, lied and manipulated uh, the last president that he advised, you know, George W. Bush, into going uh, to war with Iraq, because he, you know, because Bush was not the most strong and independent thinker, uh, you know, in the world. So he was, you know, kind of like Trump, um, somewhat easily led by his advisors. He deferred to them a lot when it came to this foreign stuff, when it came to, you know, how the way the world worked. And so David Wormser uh, worked very hard to try and selectively cherry-pick intelligence to make it look like uh, Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11. And if he, by telling you know, George W. Bush that, hey, you know, Saddam kind of had something to do with 9-11, maybe court of, sort of maybe n not a very small chance, that was enough for George W. Bush to say, well, this guy's the devil. He had something to do with 9-11, so I'm going to go after him. And because they had no real evidence to say that Saddam Hussein had anything to do with 9-11, because of course he didn't. Uh, you know, he hated al-Qaeda. He would never help them do anything. Um, they just sort of had to imply that and, and kind of, you know, sort of you know, not – they didn't lie directly to the American people about that. I don't think they ever explicitly said Saddam Hussein did 9-11, but that was the impression we all got. That was pretty much what they were telling us. They didn't say that, but that's that was the message. And David Wormser is the origin of that whole lie. And you might be asking yourself, you know, why? Why Iraq? Why did he care so much about Iraq? Uh, what did that have anything to do? It obviously had nothing to do with 9-11, we know. Uh, but, you know, how did that help Israel, too? That doesn't make any sense. Well, you know, because if you look at the other two countries um, that uh, in the clean break that he talked about, you know, trying to destabilize and overthrow their governments, that kind of makes sense. They were two allies, you know, Syria and Iran. Uh, they were the Shia-led governments in Israel since, I think, the mid-90s had been trying to um, get along more with the Arab countries, the Sunni Arab countries, I should say, um, and had made uh, Iran, you know, their big enemy. But Iraq, I mean, Saddam Hussein, he had fought a very, very long and a horrible war uh, against Iran. So they were mortal enemies. So, you know, it doesn't make sense. Why would you take out Iraq and Iran? Well, uh, Ahmad Chalabi, uh, who was, I believe, in exile in Iran, uh, who was an Iraqi who fled uh, Iraq during the Iran-Iraq war because he didn't support uh, Saddam Hussein. 
somehow convinced uh, David Wormser, and I believe Paul Wolfowitz and Richard Pearl too, I think he had contact with all three of them, uh, that somehow overthrowing Saddam Hussein would weaken Iran. Now, I'm not exactly sure what he told them or how he somehow made that up, but uh, Ahmad Chalabi had uh, a great incentive um, to, to try and convince these guys that overthrowing uh, Saddam would hurt Iran and help Israel um, because he wanted to gain power in Iran him, or in Iraq himself. And of course he did. After the 2003 Iraq invasion, Ahmad Chalabi was a, a, became a prominent Iraqi politician until he died. And so he got his wish, uh, but because this one guy wanted to have Saddam Hussein overthrown, he you know, basically spun a bunch of lies to try and you know, make his case to these three influential guys who, had, uh, who came to prominence in the American government. And because these guys thought that uh, overthrowing Saddam then would hurt Iran and help Israel, uh, they talked Bush into overthrowing Saddam, and that's how we got the Iraq War. Because of one you know, Iraqi dissident living in Iran who just wanted to, you know, get some power uh, because he was from the opposite faction of Saddam. I believe Ahmad Chalabi was a Shia, or rather it was a Shiite. would have been correct to say Shia Muslim or Shiite. And so on top of being a subversive, evil, uh, manipulative warmonger, uh, David Wormser is just not that smart. Because only an idiot... Uh, could truly be convinced by one man, by this Ahmad Chalabi. I mean, I guess you've got to give credit to Ahmad Chalabi, because uh, this is quite the feat, quite the jump in logic. Um, but you have to be an idiot to believe that uh, overthrowing Saddam Hussein, the mortal enemy of Iran, uh, would somehow weaken Iran. <laughs> oh, especially considering that Ahmad Chalabi and all the other Shiite dissidents who were living in Iran and then took over Iraq after Saddam Hussein was overthrown, uh, you know, they were Iran's best friends. So Ahmad Chalabi convinced David Wormser uh, and his friends that overthrowing Saddam Hussein, the mortal enemy of Iran, and replacing him with the best friends of Iran would hurt Iran and help Israel. But David Wormser really isn't the biggest idiot in all of this. The biggest idiot in all of this truly is Donald Trump for taking his advice. So with that said, if you gained anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and sharing this video. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.